Let's turn to business news now with Giles Beckford. And Giles, you there? Hello, Giles. Uh, Good evening to you, John. Hot summer and a dry summer up until about a week ago. What did that do to Contact Energy's profits? Well, who would be the chief executive of a power company? The first half of the year, this is last year, full of rain, prices uh, were falling because the hydroelectrics were full. And then zap, out comes the sun, dries it all up, hydro lakes disappear, the prices go through the roof. But of course, you're a hydro company, so you're having to buy power off uh, people who've got it to spare to fulfill your needs for your customers. Uh, you'll get that, you're having to pay higher prices for that. That's essentially what Contact Energy's just been through. Uh, the result being that their profit almost halved, down 40% for the six months end of December to $58 million. Uh, they also cut their costs, so they've done pretty well in trying to do the business. This is one of the things that they can't really uh, cover. Uh, it's not as if the country needs another power station. Indeed, Dennis Barnes, who's the head of Contact Energy, uh, quite clear on that point that the country doesn't need another uh, power station. Interestingly though, uh, Contact is uh, selling power, or part of a group of power companies that sells power to the TY Point aluminium smelter, and they're selling it pretty cheaply, as we all know. It's a pretty much a sweetheart deal. It's kept the TY Point smelter here for 30 odd years. Uh, Mr. Barnes says uh, they're happy to participate in, uh, in that arrangement, even though it earns them very little money. Uh, the point being, of course, is they don't want the TY Point to shut up shop. Uh, and uh, leave because it consumes about the 13, 14 percent of the country's power. Mm. If that were to come onto the market, you can imagine that would have quite a heavy effect on power prices. So it's in their self-interest to keep uh, the smelter going uh, at, should we say, mates rates. But for the time being, we're going to hear some interesting stories, I think, from the power companies. Those of them who have been in the North Island with Hydro, they'll be doing good. Genesis, which has the Huntley power station, which runs on coal and gas. Uh, they'll be doing quite nicely because they've been selling to everybody else. Others who have had any great exposure to the South Island hydro lakes, uh, then you can bet that they'll be having, uh, should we say, some tales of woe about how dry and their profits will show that accordingly. Thanks, Charles. A, a fascinating take on that uh, sector. Let's look at the stock exchange, which is um, well, it's sort of blowing its own trumpet, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, well, a, a lovely friend of mine, her dad, who was a somewhat Presbyterian South Islander, says self-praise is no praise at all. But uh, the stock exchange has given it a shot. Well, in these, these days, of course, you go out and you commission a report and you show the economic value uh, from an independent means, of course. And this is a report done, commissioned by the NZX, by the Institute of Economic Research. Uh, it estimates that the top 50 companies uh, on the uh, stock exchange board uh, are worth around somewhere in the region of $60 billion for the economy, uh, and that they produce about 10% of the country's GDP. That's the, everything that we produce. So from that point of view, they're saying, we are the means by which these companies can do good works and can uh, pump their economic power into the economy. That might be a little self-serving, <laughs> but they also talk, they also talk about the, the broader community of people who are, uh, are given work uh, by the stock exchange. Uh, accountants, lawyers, auditors, financial advisors. You just you, you go on, Giles, and I'll sing Kumbaya, I'll sing Kumbaya underneath. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, journalists even. Well, given the way that the financial journalism sector's shrunk uh, in my uh, umpteen years of doing it, uh, there's only a handful of us left, so we're an endangered breed. But we feel that we're making a really important effort, and the NZX report shows that. But um, it, what they're essentially saying is we recognise we are a valuable part of the economy. Uh, what we do does matter. Uh, and we're going through a whole pile of initiatives and navel-gazing at the moment. And that should actually mean that next year we'll do even better because we'll bring about some changes which will bring more companies onto the board. We'll wait and see on that, but everybody loves a trial, especially if it's a commissioned report by an independent outfit. Yeah, absolutely. So, which leads us nicely to the markets. What did they do today? Uh, a bit on the downsy side today. It sort of lumped around it. Uh, sort of a, a lumpy Monday start to the week. The top 50 index down 33 points. That's about 0.4%, uh, 8059 the close. The New Zealand dollar is sitting at 72.7 US cents and 92.8 Australian. Giles Beckford, our business editor, thank you very much indeed.